In this video, we're going to complete example five, and we're going to use the formula above to calculate the present value of an annuity using either Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. Now, I want to point out that this video is going to be very different to the other annuity videos that you might have watched. We're still going to follow the same process. We're going to substitute values into the formula that we can see above. What makes this different is once Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets gives you a value, a lot of people don't understand what that value actually means. We've talked a lot about how present value is basically the value we start with. So if it's a loan, it's the amount you owe at the beginning. If it's an investment, it's the amount of money you have in your investment at the beginning. In this video, you're going to notice that for this example and many questions that you're going to complete, present value is going to have a completely different meaning. And so in this video, after we've made our calculations, we're going to spend a fair chunk of the lesson talking about what present value means in this context. So in example five, it says that repayments of $4,500 are made into an investment account at the end of each year for eight years using an interest rate of 3% per annum compounded annually. And it wants us to calculate the present value of the annuity. Looking at our formula, we'll start with our rate. Our rate is 3%. And it's compounded annually so we don't need to divide it by 12 or 26 but we need to divide it by 100 so that we can convert it to a decimal it's going to be 0.03 next on our formula we can see NPER the number of time periods so our number of time periods is eight years and once again it's good it's done yearly so we don't have to make any other calculations here we also need to write down our repayment or PMT, which is $4,500. And we've mentioned lots of times that our repayments are always negative. And I'll remind you why by referring to my image of a wallet. We talk about ingoings being positive because it's money going into our wallet and outgoings being negative, it's money going out of our wallet. And repayments are always negative because whenever we make a repayment, it's money that comes out of our wallet. It might be money that comes out of our wallet and goes into an investment account, or it might be money that goes out of our wallet and is paying off a loan. Either way, it's going to be negative. Now, the question doesn't say anything about future value. It does tell us that the repayments are made at the end of each year. This means that our type is going to be type zero. Because we don't know our future value and because our type is type zero, we're not going to enter any values for this. Remembering that square brackets mean that we don't have to write anything there. By default, Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets will put the number zero in place of these if you don't type anything. So we'll bring up Microsoft Excel now and we'll go to cell C9. We go equals, and we're talking about present value. So PV, open our brackets. The first thing they want is our rate, which is 0 0.03, comma, and then the number of time periods, eight years, comma, and then the repayment, which is negative $4,500. And we're not going to put in our future value or type. Close our brackets and enter. And we get the value 31000 $588.61. So write down that our present value came out to be $31,588.61. And we've actually solved example five. We don't have to do any more. But I feel it's really important that we talk about this because you need to understand what this means. And I'm hoping that some of you have had a read of this and are confused. Because if you are confused, it probably means that you're actually paying attention. Now, whenever we start with a present value, 
we also know that there's going to be some sort of a future value. All right, so our present value we know is $31,588.61. Notice that this is a positive amount. So what is our future value here? Well, we know that we have an interest rate R of 3%. We're also making regular payments of uh, $4,500. Remembering we put a negative out the front of that. And we do this over a period of time, which in this case is eight years. Now, when you're making regular payments and you're receiving interest on this over a period of eight years, and it's an investment, you would expect your future value to be much larger than your present value, right? But our future value is actually zero dollars. And the reason for that is we never put a future value in. Now, by default, Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets will put in a future value of zero dollars. Now, this seems confusing because this is an investment. And now it seems like it's more about a loan that we're paying off because loans have a future value of zero dollars. And when you think about it, it really is because our present value is positive. And what does that mean? If it's positive, it's an ingoing. And you might remember that loans are positive because when you borrow a little over $31,000, that's money that goes into your wallet. When it's an investment, your present value is actually usually negative because it's money that goes out of your wallet and goes into your investment. So this seems really odd. It's an investment question and they've given us a positive present value amount. So what do we take from this? What does this mean? Well, to make sense of this question, we actually need to have a little discussion about future value. So I'm going to bring up Microsoft Excel and let's use the future value formula equals FV. Open our brackets. We'll start with our rate which is 0 0.03. The number of time periods which is eight years so comma eight and our repayment which is negative four thousand five hundred dollars so comma negative four thousand five hundred it's also asking for our present value and our type. So let's say that our present value is zero, meaning that we had nothing in our investment account and we're just making repayments over a period of eight years. And we also know that our type is zero because we're making our repayments at the end of the time period. Now, if these are both zero, we don't need to type anything in. So we'll close our brackets and press enter. And we get a little over $40,000. So what does this value mean? Well, if I make regular yearly repayments of $4,500 over a period of eight years into an investment account that has an interest rate of 3%, then by the end of the eight years, this is how much money I will have in my investment account, a little over $40,000. Let's call this scenario one. And for scenario one, we know that we got a future value of $40,015.51. So what's scenario two? Well, for scenario two, we're going to have the exact same interest rate, and we're going to have the exact same number of time periods. But for our repayment, we're going to make it zero dollars. And we're also going to have a present value of $31,588.61, which is the value that we calculated earlier. Now, when we say the repayment is zero dollars, what we're saying is that we're not making any repayments each year. Instead of that, we're going to have a large lump sum of money in the bank account at the very beginning, which is our present value. Now we need to talk about ingoings and outgoings again. When it's an investment, your present value is actually negative. 
So our present value should be negative $31,588.61. This is because we're putting this money into our investment at the beginning. And that money has to come out of our wallet and go into the investment. So I need to make PV negative. Let's see what happens this time. We're going to calculate our future value again, except for scenario two. Equals FV, open our brackets, our rate is the same, 0 0.03, comma, the number of time periods is the same, eight, comma, the repayments this time are zero dollars. We're not making any repayments. So we're going to put a zero down, comma. Now we need to put in our present value, which is negative 31,588.61, comma. And then our type, we'll put in a zero because the repayment is put in at the end of the period. Close it with brackets, enter. And this has worked out really great because both amounts have worked out to be the same. So these scenarios, scenario one and scenario two, give the same result. So what do we learn from this? Well, in scenario one, if someone was to make repayments of $4,500 each year for eight years, into an account that has an interest rate of 3%, then eventually they would save up a little over $40,000. In scenario two, instead of making repayments, someone could put a lump sum payment down. In this case, $31,588.61. And with the same interest rate and over the same period of time, they would come to the same future value as we received in scenario one. So let's go back to example five. In example five, we made repayments of $4,500. We did this over a period of eight years with an interest rate of 3% per annum. And this was all done annually or yearly. And when we put this into our formula, it gave us this amount, a present value of $31,588.61. And we didn't quite understand what this meant, but this is what it means. If someone was to make repayments of $4,500 every year for eight years with an interest rate of 3%, then they would reach the same future value had they put a lump sum payment of $31,588.61 into the account at the beginning and not made the repayments. So whenever we're asked to calculate the present value in an annuity question, they are asking what lump sum payment would accumulate to the same future value as this repayment plan. Anyway, that concludes example five. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.